In this episode, we'll take a look at the Godox WMIC S1, which is a UHF wireless microphone system with two transmitters and a single receiver. This entire episode is recorded with the WMIC S1. I'm wearing the transmitter back here. The lavalier is just, I don't know if you can see it. It's just on my button placket here. And that is going to the receiver, which is sitting over by the camera here into my sound devices 888. I have applied some EQ just to kind of tune the sound of this lavalier microphone to my own voice, but we also have some raw samples so you can hear what that sounded like. Let me clarify a few things before we dive into the review. First of all, this is a consumer grade UHF wireless microphone system. This is different from a lot of the other wireless systems we've seen hit the market fairly recently. This one uses UHF frequencies and you can tune which frequency you use for each of the two transmitters that you can get with the kit versus a lot of the other consumer wireless systems, which are 2.4 gigahertz wireless systems. Those use the same frequency as Wi-Fi, and they operate in a fairly narrow band. So there are some definite advantages to UHF from the standpoint that number one, you can choose the frequency. So if there's already some activity or something else like a TV station or something in the frequency you're trying to use, you can move to a different frequency for that transmitter. And also UHF, because it's lower in the overall spectrum, it can penetrate through walls and things like that a little bit better. So there's some at least theoretical advantages to those two. Now, like a lot of the other consumer wireless systems, this is a dual channel system. So you can buy it in a kit with two transmitters, which go and can be received by a single dual channel receiver. And then of course that feeds the audio off into your camera or into an audio recorder. Before we jump into the review, let's go ahead and get you some audio samples. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. So first of all, let me run through the pros, and then we'll come back and take a look at some of the cons as well. First of all, in terms of pros, Again, this is a UHF system, so you can tune anywhere between 514 megahertz all the way up to 596 megahertz. So the huge advantage here is that you have a lot more freedom and you have a way to actually deal with problems on set. <laughs> Those 2.4 gigahertz systems, they try to do their own magic on their own and you, there's nothing you can do really to change those. In this particular case, if you are getting interference, you can just move to a different frequency and see if you get a better result there. Both the transmitter and the receiver are operated each by two AA batteries, or they can also be powered via their USB-C ports. In our battery test, we put two nickel metal hydride and a loop batteries in each of the transmitters and the receiver, and we were able to achieve seven hours and 45 minutes of powering time, which is actually quite good. Most wireless systems can't operate quite that long on two AA batteries. Another cool feature is each of the transmitters, in addition to a microphone input, also have a line level input. So you could actually use this to send audio from your audio recorder over to your camera or do what they call a wireless hop. Now, while we didn't test it here, the system also includes a separately available handheld microphone transmitter. So if you need something like that, you can add that to the kit as well. I found the OLED screens on both the transmitter and the receiver to be really easy to use. I especially like the one on the receiver, which has lots of information, including the battery status and of course the wireless status of each of the transmitter units. Another nice feature is you have the ability to switch between low and high output power. Now it doesn't say anywhere in the documentation how much power that is. 
And indeed, we'll find in the outdoor distance tests that maybe it's not a whole lot. On the receiver, you can choose to output the audio as dual mono or in stereo mode. So in dual mono, it mixes both inputs into a mono output. So it puts both microphones on both the left and right channel. And then in stereo mode, it puts the first transmitter on the left channel and the second on the right channel. That way in post, you have the ability to mix them separately. So if one person came in a little bit quieter than the other, you can boost them in post and even them out. So nice. In addition to that, another thing that we don't see on a lot of the other consumer wireless systems is that you have the ability to set the output level for each of the transmitters independent of the other. So I can set one output level for one transmitter and a separate output level for the other transmitter. Again, that's really useful in those situations where you have a loud talker and a much quieter talker. The dual channel kit comes with the case, lavalier microphones with locking nuts and a alligator clip, as well as a foam cover. And the foam cover is nice because it has a little rubber gasket that holds it on. It's actually hard to get these foam covers off, in fact. <laughs> so you're not likely to lose them like you are on a lot of other systems. Also includes a 3.5 millimeter TRS output cable and an XLR output cable, a shoe mount. It also includes two transmitters and in this case, the receiver as well. We did our practical noise floor sample. And the way we did that, of course, is that we recorded some samples. We loudness normalized to minus 23 LUFS and then we measured the silent portion. And what we found is that this came in at minus 71 dB RMS max, which is actually quite good for a consumer wireless system. It actually came in quieter than my Audio Limited A10, but there's a little bit of a wrinkle to that, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the cons. The firmware is upgradable via the USB-C port, comes with a one-year warranty, and at the time of this review, the dual channel kit is priced at $249 US, and the single channel kit, which comes with a dual channel receiver, but just one transmitter, and you can always add another transmitter later, comes in at $179 US. All right, let's move on to the cons. Number one, there is a 12 millisecond latency, which is a little bit unusual for a UHF system. I don't know if it's sending a digital signal. I don't know what it's doing there, but in any case, there is a 12 millisecond latency. What that means in practical terms, if you're recording with a boom mic and this wireless system, they're gonna be a little bit out of sync of each other. You can, of course, move them back into sync in post. That's just something you need to be aware of. A lot of recorders, the nicer recorders, like the Zoom F-Series and the Sound Devices Mix Pre, allow you to employ a delay on some of the inputs. So you can delay the boom mic input so that it is in sync right in the recordings. Now, this is another one of those consumer systems where there's no gain setting or input level setting on the transmitters. So I assume it's applying some sort of unity gain, and your only control in terms of overall level is the output level at the receiver. I wish you had a little bit more control there. It would be nice to, to do that because then you could sort of optimize the overall levels. But overall, it didn't seem to be a problem for us in our tests so far. The included XLR output cable is mono only. So if you want to record each channel separately into an XLR set of inputs on a recorder or your camera, you're going to need to buy a third party cable with a TRS 3.5 millimeter connector on one end and dual XLR connectors on the other end. Now, while I cited UHF and its ability to tune to different frequencies as sort of a wideband tuning range that you can go to, the problem with this particular set is there's no scan feature. So you can't do any sort of scanning to see which frequencies are available or not being used by something else. So that's a really a pretty big downside. So basically you'd have to change the frequency on the transmitter and the receiver and test and make sure everything's okay. And another thing is that once you have set the frequency that you want to use for one of the transmitters on the receiver, there is no sort of sync function. Like a lot of the wireless systems will allow you to automatically sync. And so once you've set it on the receiver, you just hold them together. And now the transmitter is on the same frequency that you've set on the receiver. This doesn't have this, so you have to manually set it on both. To me, that's not a huge deal. It does just take a little bit longer to get things set up. The build quality is okay. It's mostly kind of a lighter plastic didn't super impress me. Uh, we'll just have to see over time how it holds up. Distance is an interesting story with this system. Indoors, it did pretty well. Here's a sample. We're going to do a distance test indoors this time. Emma is on the... I don't know what channel, one of them. Left channel looks like. I'm on right channel. Whoops, I'm on right channel. <laughs> uh, we're going to go upstairs and then we're each going to go to a different end of the house and then we'll come back and see how far we get. So here we go. 
you can close that door behind you. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go, you go ahead and go upstairs. I'm gonna walk to this end uh, and then you can go towards your bedroom. Okay. Okay, and then I'm at the other end of the house right now, still downstairs. Check and I don't know check. if we're still connected. And I'm gonna come back out this way and go upstairs. This is at the top of the stairwell. You're at the top of the stairwell, good. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got floor and subfloor between us. All right, I'm at the top of the stairwell now, and we've closed the door to the office, and now we're going to close the door up here. And I am in the kitchen, which is at the opposite end of the house. How are things over there, Emma? No, no, this is at the other end of the house in the hallway by the bookcase. Okay, cool. Let's go back down and see what we got. All right. And where are you wearing your uh, transmitter pack? It's in the pocket of this jacket, so on the same side of me as the mic. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'm coming back downstairs. We opened the second door, coming downstairs, and coming back toward the office. More o stairs. Opening the door, and I'm back, although I'm supposed to be on this side because I'm, I'm right channel, <laughs> and you're left channel on that side. Okay. All right, so there's the indoor distance test. Let's see how we did. Outdoors, it did pretty horrifically in very difficult situations. And that difficult situation is going outdoors with no buildings or walls nearby. That is one of the hardest things for any wireless microphone system, but this one did pretty poorly, I will say. And in fact, if you are planning to use it outdoors and you're gonna be in the wide open, um, I would not recommend this system, unfortunately. It just didn't hold up. Even at 10 meters, we were already dropping signal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're starting here. Uh, this is our second test, actually. In this case, I'm wearing my transmitter pack on the belt here. Mine's right here in this pocket. In your pocket, okay. We both hit a high power now. We did the initial test at low power, and we lost signal pretty, <laughs> like at 20 meters, basically. Yeah. So at least when I was when it wasn't direct line of sight, when the when the pack was on my back and we were 20 meters away facing the camera, it was cutting out some. So let's go ahead and do it here at high power and we're gonna do a better job counting this time. Yes. Well, so here we go. Okay. One, two, two three, four, five, six. One other thing in terms of cons, while I did cite that the practical noise sample came in at minus 71 dB RMS max, that's actually quite good. However, if you boost that up a little bit, you're definitely not hearing room tone. You are hearing what sounds to me like electronic noise of some sort. Here's a quick sample. So it almost looks like they're doing something electronically to process the audio and try and push down the silent portions in some way. It seems like, just a guess, I don't know what they're doing, but in any case, it's kind of a good story and a bad story at the same time. Good in terms of the overall levels, but not so good in terms of what's actually there. So overall, what are my impressions of the WMIC S1 system? I think it's a good first product in the wireless microphone system for Godox. It needs some work, however. <laughs> if you plan to work outside, this is not the system for you and they really need to work on that. I think what we're seeing is with this incredible battery life, they're not actually employing a whole lot of power output at the transmitter. So that's going to be fine. If you're doing talking head and things like that, or maybe small demonstrations in a studio environment, I think it'll be just fine. If on the other hand, you're going to be working outdoors a whole lot, I just don't think this system is probably the right choice for you. I also think it's a pretty big omission to not have some sort of scan feature. That's the big advantage of UHF is you have the ability to use all, you know, this wide range of different frequencies. But if you don't know what's happening on any of those frequencies, how do you choose a frequency? And so you're going to need either an external separate $200 to $500 scanner, or you're just going to have to guess and test. So is that a deal breaker? You'll have to decide for yourself. Do you have time to do that where you look around for a new frequency and test it and make sure it's working okay? and be willing to change it again if it's, you know, ends up halfway through the shoot not working okay. Those are just some considerations you'll need to make. So what are my recommendations overall? 
I don't highly recommend this system if you're working outdoors. If you're working indoors, just doing talking head and working at a reasonable distance like this from the camera, we're probably two and a half meters from the camera or from the audio recorder, that's going to be just fine. But if you're going to be working at much longer distances outdoors, that's where things start to get really dicey here. So I'm hopeful that Godox will take this information and make a better second generation. Hopefully something that works a little bit better outdoors and also with a scan feature. So hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Music